So welcome everybody to the uh, May Sawtooth Contributors Meeting. Uh, there are two rules for all Linux Foundation meetings that I need to remind you of. One is the antitrust policy notice. Um, this is a safe harbor for you know competing companies to work together. So uh, you know no antitrusting. The second thing is uh, we have a code of conduct that we take very seriously. Uh, if you feel that uh, you know everybody is welcome, and if you feel that there is a breach of the code of conduct, uh, please reach out. Um, let's see. So, if someone else wants to jump in and uh, talk, this is just a copy of the previous. Um, meeting minutes so if someone wants to uh jump in and start editing i posted a link in the sawtooth cha channel and we can just collaboratively edit this and uh kevin i see you've come off mute so i'll shut up and let you take the floor yeah i'm just uh i'm happy to do it uh so items from the last call was top of the thing was uh quarterly report so is it is it just the github uh, PR request that you need to get done, James, or is it uh, anything? Else? I think the Any report's done. You you okayed it. Uh, Sean never replied on there. Um, I was waiting for him, and I forgot about it after I was waiting for him. I hit him a couple times, and I don't know if Andy knows anything on what's going on there. I think Andy's the only one from Sean's company. Uh, I looked at it. I think it's fine. I don't know if Sean ever actually looked at it, but I, it's probably good to go. Okay. I, I would say just do the do the PR. Okay. That gives at least one more opportunity to object. So. Okay. The main branch. We haven't done the uh, switch over. Uh, Sean and I didn't get a chance to talk about that, but I don't think it was any uh, major issue too much other than the the selections of the, the patching stuff, which is a little bit of a separate issue. Uh, however, the default branch is now to 1.3, so that's, uh, as, as I see from the PRs, so I think that's at least part of the way through. Um, the, I'm just going to rattle through and say either ask or give what I know about the statuses. Number two, the poet consensus stuff. So uh, these are items. The main takeaway, uh, I think, was that uh, uh, Joseph, you were going to go and take a look at uh, looking at the code and cleaning up the documentation and running it through. I know you've been poking around at it. Uh, you want to just give a summary of where you got to and what you still have to do? Yeah, sorry for any background noise. Um yeah, uh, I've, I've uh, as Kevin said, sort of day jobs, etc. But I've got to sort of poking around through the tutorials, which was one thing people were kind of complaining about on the Discord, um, and just running through those myself. And yeah, I can confirm there is definitely an issue with Poet, uh, while the PB, uh, PF, PBFT stuff seems to work. Um, so yeah, I'm going to continue working at that. Um, I had a question. Uh, actually, let's I'll come back to new items in a second. Uh, go through the old stuff. Uh, Rafty commission stuff. Da -da. The James, did you get a chance to go through the documentation? You're no, I have to... not. Uh, and remove what was this? Remove mentions of what? Oh, remove the oh decommissioning of raft. Make sure we go. Through. Oh, yeah. identify this is identify where we're re referencing it and decommission it. Okay. Uh, do you actually have time to do that uh, over the next month, James? Yeah, I, I will get that done since I promised to do it. Um, I'll make sure I get rid of any raft mentions in there. Or even just and, list them out where they are. Yeah. Okay. Uh, once we do that, then we have the work slate of what can be done. Uh, what we have to do to make it official to decommission that, and there are just all the places that we need to touch and advertise that. 
Okay, long running testing. That's me. So uh, the uh, what are we looking to do is actually uh, contribute forward our Helm chart that we use to our Helm chart to use to install uh, Sawtooth, the uh, which can do it with all the different uh, consensus and stuff. Uh, the thing that's holding up that at is that it's actually wound up with a bunch of stuff that's that's peculiar to BTP as we go through, and I'm in the process of trying to pull out that stuff, among other things that that Helm chart depends on is a standard library that we use, which may may or may not be controversial uh, to the rest of the world. So it's just to make it more, uh, call it vanilla and less opinionated, I think. Uh, but so that's ongoing. The strategy you're taking is because the uh, the test tool seems to be sort of in bits and pieces uh, that was formerly used is actually to use something that we're putting we're putting together for our own reasons anyway, and be being contributed forward, which is uh, basically using a Helm test to uh, periodically hit a uh, blockchain under test. And that way you can install one and then periodically uh, set up a job through either Cron or a, a periodic Jenkins job to run some load against the, the server. And that can be done as continuously as we like. Uh, so that's the general strategy. If there's any questions around that, I'm happy to explain further. But it's in the end, it's it ends up being very simple and very portable to different uh, different environments. So I think that's that's one of the better ways to do it. Any questions about that? Okay. Uh, Bill's releasing the Hedera consensus, and Bill just joined us. Yeah, I have. I'm not um, no, it's, ha it's happened. No, it's um, it's happening. So we're um, we're doing a um, a live uh, stress test on a five node cluster on Google Cloud. Sort of, I'm I'm gearing that up as we speak. Um, at the end of this stress test, we're going to release it because I still suspect there may be a bug or two. So at the end of the stress test, we're going to go ahead and open source it. We're extremely close. And the main thing is, let's, let's why don't we, uh, that's not a Sawtooth announcement, but it can definitely be in the Sawtooth channel announcing that, right? Definitely. There definitely will be an announcement. Oh, no, I mean, from, I was talking Discord channels, right? Oh, the yes, announcement yes, yeah. For channel sure. isn't really advertising. <laughs> not that this is advertising, but you know what I mean. Or the or end on the contributors channel. I think that people will be interested. But it seems like there's a lot of people on the Discord channel, the main Discord channel, that are experimenting with things, and I'm sure you would like to have people experimenting with things. Okay. okay, for sure. I'll make I'll make sure to do that. Uh, how goes the any news on searching down additional Sawtooth developers? And they're out. We have half of my developers on here. keep the search out and try to get them contributed anytime we hear anybody, let's get them in. Uh, how to turn the end user experience into the documents. Not sure what this refers to from the last time. Oh, do -do. Have some Rust code from the Python. Okay, uh, actually, can we go to the, the tools listing there? I think is that doc. Thank you. No, sorry, that was just the last one. Okay, listing out the build tools. Okay, so that's a decent review of the last time. Uh, what I want to suggest is ways to keep this meeting a little survivable, just briefly, uh, in terms of making sure we, we have a cadence in the meeting. So why don't we, from uh, now on, we'll just set up a, we'll put in the, the notes, and, and I'll do it afterwards, a standing agenda of what items we do. So we'll review past events, major issues, uh, outreach, uh, ideas, and open PRs. Not necessarily in that order. Uh, and then the, uh, that agenda is open to be changed, but I think that's what we should do. Anybody else have any ideas about that or about standing agenda items? I just want to have it repeating every single time we do the meeting, we'll do the same agenda. I mean, that sounds pretty good. 
Okay. I don't Silence is agreement. <laughs> As is the tradition in my team. If you, if you if nobody ejects, that makes it official. Okay. Uh, so to that end, uh, I had a uh, question that was coming up for me in the in the poet stuff, or at least related to the poet stuff. Um, do, are we still in touch or is anyone still in touch with any of the uh, other than uh, the, or is it just Bitwise, the, the original designers of the Poet Protocol? Or is that Dan originally came up with that? Or because I was thinking the critical part of the Poet design is the uh, SGX and or the, the sort of naughty CFT we all just agree to keep our clocks current uh, strategy, but it could be de be designed to use uh, an authoritative time service or like a verified time service uh, that are out there in the world. So anybody else familiar with that? Basically where you can get a sign of a time reading and it's not fully decentralized, but the, the number of time servers like that out there or trusted time services out there are quite a lot and they're quite open. And it Adara can deliver a, a one step a, above authoritative this. time stamp. That's from uh, yeah, hey. but that's that's linking into it. I was thinking, I was thinking the, the trust the time service. All you got to do do is be able to trust the the certificate that they print, right? It's a public service, right? Right. And I'm wondering, digging into the poet protocol, it's proof in the way it works. I'm rusty on it, but the. What you can guarantee is that if you've got a trusted time uh, reading, you can guarantee that the time you have gone at least that far. You may have gone further, but you've gone at least that far in terms of the clock must have passed that. And it, you don't necessarily have to be in sync with that time service either. But anyway, I wanted to know if we knew who was the original designer of the algorithm and just discuss what was going on there because because of the SDX, there's a lot of other security analysis that went on around it. I want to make sure we don't loosen it and think about whether this is something that could be done as an enhancement to Poet or if it needs to be something totally separate. Trusted time service. So I think that was Dan from Intel, wasn't it? Who originally built that? I think you're so right about that. Dan wasn't the initial designer. I'm. This was a long time ago, um, and I wasn't involved initially. But um, Dan was the like he ran the project in Intel, um, and I know mm -hmm. he's still like you can still reach out to him, um, though he's not really involved anymore. Um, but there was another scientist within Intel who actually designed the algorithm. Um, I'm blanking on his name right now, though. Uh, it'd just be helpful. It's just It's just someone to track down and talk to and bounce the idea off of and or tell us it's, it's a terrible idea. Something like that. Anyway, that was an idea Mick, around Poet that I was it to Mick, throw out there. Was it Mick Bowman? That sounds right. Yeah, I, I think a lot of this was Mick Bowman's work. I remember Mick. I also noticed, and I don't know if you saw it differently, uh, Joseph, I noticed that the algorithm itself isn't all that documented. There's stuff smattering around here and there, but it's not really as kind of Full, full description. Yeah, I found the uh, Okay, yeah. Uh, so yeah, I, I found the same thing with sorry, the documentation. It'd be nice to actually document the full algorithm because that's that's actually what I'm looking at. Looking like is like what is the discussion of the algorithm? So what bits are locked down and trusted and not trusted and where can it be flexed? Okay. Uh, so in terms of the time things, one of the other things I'm thinking about is that there's a company called Hoptrot that does this and they can do, they can do auditable time, which is a little bit different, but I, one of the things they do is, is a, an open standard time. It's a IETF standard for what I'm talking about. Uh, I'm blanking on the acronym. I think it's TAS, but I'm, I'm 
think I'm going to write. Anyway, uh, that's a poet thing. Uh, one other thing is new items is Ryan, you've been doing some work uh, with the uh, Sawtooth SDK and in particular kind of doing a more idiomatic one, also the proto buff thing. You want to talk about that for a little bit? Uh, yeah, so in internally, um, we're uh, replacing the um, existing Sawtooth SDK Rust with a Tokyo-based implementation um, while trying to uh, preserve as many interfaces as possible, as much of the interface as possible. Um, and we're also adding some uh, additional features um, which will allow um, connections to multiple validators and um, prioritization of which node to uh, write to based on, uh, based on um, um, well, potentially a bunch of factors, but initially, um, which one has the greatest block height, so it's more likely to, more likely to, um, to commit quicker. Um, and as part of that, um, we're also swapping out the existing dependency on Rust protobuf, which if you uh, look at the GitHub is uh, currently it is out of maintenance. Um, and all the energy seems to have moved to Prost, um, which has uh, slightly nicer ergonomics, but um, again is actually is actually being maintained and is part of the is part of the Tokyo um, group of projects. Um, so we'll probably be in a state soon enough um, that. Uh, with that bit of work to deal with um, creating a new Tokyo client, um, we'll also be able to um, provide the interfaces for the transaction, the uh, traits for the transaction processor, um, both synchronously and asynchronously using using that new using that new uh, ZMQ client code. Um, so at that point, it effectively becomes. Um, and at very least the, an alternative to the um, existing Sawtooth SDK Rust. Um, so we're wondering whether that might be um, worth an official move, or at least considering it as an official move, if it's um, if it can be uh, released in a way that doesn't break too many um, existing users. So the the main breaking change would be the swap of um, Rust pro of protobuf to Prost, as there are some there are some differences there. Uh, they're only minor, and they're mostly um, uh, more convenient because uh, Prost is uh, more idiomatic about um, it doesn't expose slightly um, odd uh, protobuf-y pointer types. It uses options and vectors and things like that, so it's um, a little a little um, little little more ergonomic, but it is. It is potentially a breaking change. So in a previous meeting, um, it was mentioned that Rust, uh, sort of SDK Rust is effectively um, uh, up for grabs really as it's out of, out of maintenance itself. Um, so a- So yes and no, right? Cause it's, it's used in, it's, it's obviously used in the other projects. Mm -hmm. the validator being one of them, right? Mm -hmm. So the two things I think you're talking about there. One is an alternative SDK, really, which the first step there is, is let's get it pub let's get it published as separate because I know where you're talking about in our code base, which is open, but let's get it out and published so at least people can look at it and, and have an informed choice on it. However, the other thing you're talking about is more serious, which is the Rust protobuf being out of maintenance. That means the, the SDK, um, uh, the SDK, therefore, is in trouble. Um, could you, uh, or can someone, I should say, uh, take a look and see what the the ten, other than the dealing with the protobuf uh, structs and, and traits themselves? Uh, Let's see what the impact is of just moving the 
the salty SDK rust to Proust. And or if there are any alternatives, you should always have three choices, right? Existing one out of maintenance, what are the other options? Are there other options? Mm -hmm. Therefore, pr Proust, right? Uh, and remember, if no one else volunteers, it's going to be Ryan. <laughs> I have a question. Are you using the um, same signing library in your in your new SDK? Um, that is not currently um, part of it. No, uh, but we probably wouldn't be. No, we'd be using um, the one which we bring in in Cr Chronicle, which is uh, K two five six. The pure rust one. There's 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 a pure rust one out there that I've been yeah yeah. Asking. It's, I've been... it's the pure rust one K two five six that we're using. Yeah, there's the the open SSL dependency would go as well at least in at least in um our version. I, I I've been playing with building a um for for my current project. I've been um playing at building a client library uh that that um compiles to Wasm, so a JavaScript uh code can use it. And that's the, mm -hmm. the sticking point. I had to swap out the signing. Oh, of course, yeah, it opens the cells like, quite oh, painful. Right, it was yeah, yeah. it was killing me there, right? So I had to rewrite all my signing in, in another library. It works. It works fine, actually. And then I can do I can do transaction creation in um, in Wasm and then put Java, uh, tie it to JavaScript stubs. It's actually a nice, yeah. nice, uh, it was a fun, fun project. But um, yeah, the signing yeah, was an issue. Using, and get, we've, yeah, we've not been using Opus, OpenSSL from our... Uh, application code for some time so yeah that's, that's okay fine. Cool. that's good to know that somebody else had the same issue are we truly not using it or is it just the build of it hidden behind another dependency meaning transitively pulled in or is it really just completely independent of openness as well no it is we we are doing the signing we are doing doing the signing in um chronicle with k256 not with um source of sdk and openness so one thing I'd watch out is it's the particular patch rev of, of secp256, isn't it? It's K1 or whatever. I just want to make sure um, that we're that yes, that's yeah, not... you, yeah, 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 yeah. You, you do need to make that call. You can make that call explicitly. Um and yeah. that's done. But yeah, that's not the default. That's not, I can't remember the the exact the exact name of it, but yes, that um that uh specific variant. Um is um is catered for but it's not the default yeah. um notes here um thinking about publishing it there is a contrib folder somewhere around, but uh, Rust crates are a little funny to put in that, I think, unless unless I'm mistaken. So why don't we, let's get the stuff published. Let's get that SDK separated out, published in some repository, and then we can do some sort of democratic thing to see whether it needs to go in or just the ideas taken and evolve the SDK Rust. Chances are being the last one. Uh, the other thing I was thinking, so there are so, still some open holes in that uh, SDK, right? So you don't have the transaction processor side, signing, and presumably the consensus side as well. Uh, yeah, the transaction sure. processor, yeah, it's purely the um, ZMQ uh, client stuff that we're, replace, we're replacing currently, but the rest of it should be relatively simple compared to them as we're preserving so the, it, um, just the well it's the zmq client and you've got a little bit higher because of the it's it's the true sawtooth client side of the zmq client right because of the block height stuff is there but the tp doesn't have that going on you can't have a tp attached no, to more no, than one but we're preserved it's preserving the it preserve it, it will preserve the zmq message sender interface so we can just slot that in Okay, what I suggest, we need questions answered by you, Ryan. One is impact of moving the existing K to first, 
and two, uh, two, the publishing of that. Uh, I realize I'm on the hook for that a little bit too. Publishing of the Tokyo SD, Tokyo ZMQ SDK. ZMQ. Come up with a good name for it too. So is that dependent uh, on me. LibZMQ? Um, yes. It, it, yeah, transitively via TMQ. So there's um, Tokyo bind bindings for uh, LibZMQ. There is I a see. pure okay. must. ZMQ implementation, but it's no when it's very experimental, so I'm not going there. Yeah, yeah I, I actually, it's interesting that you guys are doing this. I have, um, I literally just ran into this with with my last uh, thing that I'm building. I'm building a a custom uh, API in front of it, and I'm I'm using um, I'm using an async API engine, and mm -hmm. uh, I had to put every every call into my into my um, in, into the blockchain in a in a you know a thread wrapper. So it'd be, uh, yeah, be interesting. Yeah, it's quite uncomfortable. I mean, you can, yeah, you can use um, uh, Tokyo's um, uh, blocking tasks, but yeah, it's still pretty uncomfortable. Well, I mean, that's just, yeah, I, I, when I say thread wrapper, that's what I mean. I use like sort of a blocking wrapper. Um, actually, the, I, I, I'm blanking on, on, the, um, on the, uh, the, the web framework I use right now, but they, they have their own blocking thing. But still, I mean, you're, 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 you're you know, behind the scenes is running a thread pool and you got to think about all that mechanics if something's going wrong too. So yeah, be yeah this, to, to this, 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 this implementation is uh, mutex free and just all Tokyo task based. So it should be, should be uh, quite a bit simpler. Yeah, I'll check it out. Thank you. So which, since you're talking, Bill, the, you had some work you were doing with updating the Go library, uh, sorry, the Go SDK with the consensus stuff. Is that all done? Um, I don't remember if we merged the last commit, but I will follow up on it because I needed to do it anyway to push out the Hedera stuff. There may have been one or two more commits in my branch that I haven't upstreamed yet, but um, it's it's use, it's absolutely usable. I have I actually haven't touched the um, the code that's the um, the Go SDK, actual SDK code for the consensus. I haven't touched it in like four, five months, maybe more now. It's just been stable. So I, I'm pretty mm -hmm. confident in if somebody else wanted to build consensus with that, that it would work just fine. Okay, I'm more just checking to make sure it's all been contributed up and at least PLs. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure. It. I'll make sure. There may be one commit. I may be okay. one commit behind, but I'll, I'll follow up on it. Okay, okay. Thank you. What else? Uh, that's what I have to riff on so far. Uh, does anybody else have anything they would like to do? Okay. Uh, the other thing, uh, sorry, I, we need to add to a standing agenda too. That we'll note down is. Uh, answering questions on Discord, which I saw the last one was done by you, Andy. So thank you from everyone. Uh, go through it, but I think we I think we got a little weaker this last month in terms of answering people's questions. They tend to seem to be, the, they all seem to be the same questions uh, is one thing I noticed looking back over it, which is uh, instructions not matching up to how you have to do things in reality and some things are a little out of date. So, uh, the answer to that is we should figure out a, a strategy to get those docu that documentation up to date so we can stop those uh, stop those questions or at least get people a, give a, give people a fighting chance to actually get the right answer without having to go to Discord. Uh, the can I get a volunteer for that? You have ten seconds to volunteer, otherwise it's going to be one of my guys. I'll be more explicit. Ten seconds, otherwise, it's going to be you, Mark. I figured it might be. <laughs> All right. So Mark is volunteering. Okay. Where Mark is being voluntold. You're being voluntold for to. It's specifically those those all those questions around. Uh, because I think you'd like to do it anyway. 
is around setting up the different consensuses and, and that the instructions are, are flagged. So you can actually literally go back through the history of the last month or so on setting those things up, run through the documentations, make some recommendations about what needs to be updated. Okay. And or changed. Mm -hmm. And or added, I mean. Anybody else? Sorry, I'm kind of keen not to dominate the conversation. I realize uh, we've got three of my guys on the call here, so I'd be talking. So if there's anybody else that wants anything to open up any other versions or any other issues, please talk. Okay. Uh, any last one is any any open PRs that need attention that haven't been mentioned on the Sawtooth contributor? Any other practices where no one knows how to do it, or we're not being explicit enough on how to do it? Or once, and twice. Uh, so times. I have the, I have a patch commit to the Sawtooth SDK Rust, um, which failed um, uh, failed CI um, for. Uh, uh, resumable reason i think there's an app, app get failed in the lint um so that was uh an approved pr but um i won't but won't merge due to that um lint validation so if someone could um rerun the lint on that that would be that would be good i'll rerun it so that we need okay cool so it's just the maintainers that can poke that right because that's a github action i think isn't it or it's the yeah. just action okay thank you andy Uh, any other business? Going once, going twice. We can give 12 minutes of our lives back. Okay, thank you. I will, uh, I will, once you close this out, Rai, I will, I will add in the, I will go through and edit and add in the notes that I've got for it. Okay, it's there for you. And I want to uh, thank everyone for joining and I'll see you in a month. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye.